study uh, biblically on the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, we will study thoroughly on the subject here. Now, as I said many times to you, please memorize it. Uh, this time we will go over uh, Bible uh, references on the deity of Jesus Christ. Systematically, I will teach you. Uh, so are you ready? Now write, write down, I'll give you some introductory statement. Uh, today's Christianity is in, in danger. The growing number of theologians and pastors are teaching religious pluralism. Denying the deity of Jesus Christ. Some of them also acknowledge the deity of Jesus Christ, but not in full scale. They only understand the partial deity of Jesus Christ. As we have learned, first century and fourth century heresies, such as first century avionism, also fourth century Arianism, all these heretic teachings. were about the rejection of the deity of Jesus Christ. And also Jesus told his disciples rejection of the deity of Jesus Christ will be the one of will be one of the end time signs and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Today, many churches, preachings, and Bible studies are not teaching solid Christology. As a result, majority of Christians are not well informed on the deity and humanity of Jesus Christ. They have just a rough idea who Jesus is, but they do not know systematically who Jesus is in terms of his deity and his humanity. As a result, growing number of heretic denominations arising all over the world. And their numbers are growing very fast. Traditional church members transferring transferring to those heretic teaching churches. It is all because of lacking in teaching the solid Christology.
There are many unbiblical denominations around the world, around the world. Unbiblical means heretic. It's because of denying and rejecting the deity of Jesus Christ. Any Christian denomination that reject the deity of Jesus Christ is heretic denomination. Some uh, in the Trinity in the Trinity the among in the Trinity the issue on Jesus Christ has been issued on Jesus Christ in the church uh, during the church history in the church history issued on Jesus okay are okay, during the church history period has been the major major debate major debate and also this Christology issue became the major topic for dividing in dividing denominations and hating each other and so on there is no problem uh, in the topic of other God everybody gave consensus they agree Father God is their God. But issue on Jesus has many variations. Creating many different denominations because of this. As the 20th century enters, the issues on the Holy Spirit became the another dividing issues but the Holy Spirit issue is not that as, as, as severe as the issue of that of the Jesus issue so the issue on Jesus is the major issue throughout the church history of 2000 years. So it is our, our duty to find, to, to, to make the clear distinctions and definitions on the topic of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Okay. So which issue is the most important nowadays? Jesus issue. Father issue is okay. Okay. But uh, but the Holy Spirit issue, yes. Holy Spirit issue. Some denominations uh, to, they said the you know mani manifestation of the Holy Spirit had been stopped, had been seized, uh, you know, uh, in the first century. So now no more. So speaking in tongues and prophecies and 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 doing some kind of a gifts, you know, manifest manifestations of Holy Spirit. There are some fundamental churches 
and denominations still opposing opposing to that okay but that's okay but they still share same belief on Jesus who is our who is our savior so we get along with those people who denies the manifestation of the holy spirit but if you deny the power of Jesus renewing and reforming power of Jesus okay salvation power of Jesus then we call them you are heresy you see here therefore the christology is is so crucial for all of us to understand clearly and biblically okay now uh, there are many there are many so called uh, denominations who that has different view on Jesus if any denomination denies the deity of Jesus then we call them heresy right such as such as what let, let me write it down jehovah witness okay we write it down and even even it's the this is the american one this is the usa american product and how about korean product korean product there is one famous korean product is uh, munis you know you know munis munis is uh, mun sanmyeong mun in, let me write down in korean language mun san myeong it's a moon, sun, myeon. This is a myeon. This church called Unification Church. This man is very powerful influencer around the world he said he is Jesus Christ and many followers around the world his center headquarter is in near Ujangbu little little north, north of the Ujangbu area it's a huge castle as a matter of fact, about a month ago, uh, his his uh, private uh, helicopter got crashed. The price of that that helicopter is the same same helicopter as American president helicopter. Very expensive helicopter, and you know every year around 5,000 uh, new brides and grooms uh, marry under his officiation but they they most of them even do not know their spouse until that wedding date the unification church picked by paper you you Russian boy okay you Japanese girl you husband and wife you Korean boy you Indian girl you husband and wife no Sri Lankan <laughs> so that group wedding the wedding normally takes place in Korea and other parts of the world. They're renting big football 
football stadium. Like that. That's a Muniz. This Muniz owns multi billion dollars international companies. In, in America, you know Empire State Building? That's the tallest building in, America, in, in, in the world, okay? owned by Muniz. You see how great Koreans are. <laughs> <laughs> and in America, the Washington Star newspaper, that's very powerful newspaper around the world, okay? That is owned by Muniz. New York Times is not. But next to the New York Times is the Washington Star. That's owned by Muniz. Korean men own that. And many others, even in Korea here. Laura uh, even they own a uh, football team, Korean soccer team. It's a top soccer team, Sungnam. You know Sungnam? Sangnam soccer team is owned by Muniz. And university down some place in the south, the Sun Myung, the Sun, Sun Mun, Sun Mun University, they're owned by Muniz. And you know in Hangang River, Hangang River, that the big tourist boat, you know, crew, crew, cruisers there. Someone told me they're owned by Muniz too. And many drinks, your soft drinks. Yeah, all the, uh, you know, the Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is not. Yeah, Coca-Cola style, all the drinks you have, you know, in a grocery, most of the drinks owned by Muniz. And, this, this uh, Mun Sang Myung has such a power, almost uh, every past president of a country, prime minister, not existing, former, former prime ministers, former president, okay, former uh, 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 house leader, house of representative, all the former kings, all got financially sponsored by Muniz. Even in Russia, in a Khrushchev? No, 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 no. no who, is the, who is the man who has the ill? Gorbachev. Gorbachev or whatever. All these big guys, all Muni organization. So when, see, every year, you know, all these guys are gathered in, in New York or Washington. About 300, sometimes 1,000 top former leaders gathered together, sponsored by Muniz. They said, we gather here for the world peace. You see? World peace. So the name of the gathering called, I forgot, it's kind of, uh, you know, peace-related names there. So, this Mr. Moon, Sun Myung, stand, everybody applauding him and then bowing to him. This man even cannot speak in one word English. Only he knows, thank you, kamsahamnida. That's all. But he has such a power. That's a muni. That's a, it's a Korean, Korean product. <laughs> and we've got uh, you know, uh, Unitarian, I told you, Unitarian, Unitarian Church. They only believe in Father. That's a U.S., you know, Harvard University. Harvard University. It's a U.S.A.
many of the many in Mormon in China Falun Gong have you heard this? it's another it's a Buddhist and Christianity mixed up it's a big Falun Gong it's a big organization in China Chinese communist government uh, afraid of these guys here so they 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 they, they just uh, you know they define them as an enemy. So these Falun Gong cannot practice in China. Because their are numbers, numbers of about 30, 30 billion or more than that. A lot of, it's a big power. Falun Gong is kind of religious pluralism. You know, we believe Jesus, we believe Buddha, we believe Islam, we believe whatever, all mixed up, like a bibimbap. Hmm? <laughs> Lot of bibimbap here. This is USA, here, Mormon, and Falun Gong in China. I'll give you one, since we are Filipinos here, Filipina here, I'll give you one Filipina. Philippines has a funny, funny Falun Gong here. Iglesia de Cristo. Iglesia de Cristo. Church of Christ. They call it Church of Christ. Yeah, in English it's Church of Christ. It's a beautiful name. But they don't believe in Christ. You see, in, in the Philippines, these groups are big group. A lot of money, and church buildings are beautiful all over town, all over, all over the country. It's a beautiful, it looks, it looks very modern, white color, in a good landscape. Once you join that build, that denomination, you have to pay tight. Okay, you have to pay tight. You gotta be very obedient to royal to the church. But church guarantees their life. If you don't have a job, we will provide you a job. No money, we'll give you welfare money. So they are guaranteed. So once you got hooked into, you cannot get out of there. So it's kind of a communistic, you know, community there. In the name of their religion. But name, Church of Christ. Denying Jesus as the Son of God. As the Son of God. Right, you Filipinos? Yes, Filipina? The ancient huh? Yeah, okay, that's a small one compared to this. They are sending missionaries too. All over. Missionaries to evangelize Filipinos in overseas. There are, there are a lot of Filipinos and Filipinas working in the overseas. The major overseas workers are Filipinos and Filipinas around the world. Look at these guys, they are minority. Mm. They, call, they call those guys working overseas, numbers around now, around, around, 10, around, around 10 million now. They used to be 8 million, 9 million, now it's around hitting 10 million. Overseas Filipinos, not, not immigrants, workers. There are a lot of Filipino immigrants in America, more than Koreans. I would say around 3 million. Koreans only 2 million in America. Still it's a big group, but the Filipinos have more. Around 10 million, they call it OFW. What OFW stands for? Overseas. Overseas. 
O F F F. Overseas is a foreign. Y F. Filipino. Filipino. Philippines starts P. Huh? This one makes F sound. That's why O F W. Now they call it anyway O F W. Because I know, I know O F W concern uh, government officers, even minister of in charge of this ministry, ministers, government minister. Because they propose me to work with them through our satellite systems. Anyway, in the Middle East alone, more than one million Filipinos. In the Middle East alone, many of them, many of Filipino, is Filipino said the men's Filipinos, girls Filipina. They said that Filipina. That's Spanish. Uh, many Filipinas are working as a nanny. Nanny, okay. Not only nanny, nurses, you know, all the household-related and hospital-related workers. A lot of Filipinas. So Filipinas now can enter deep inside of, uh, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia's royal family, taking care of their children and food. So they are now a major, the Islam missionary forces as a spy members, okay, living together with this Islam royal and rich, you know, families. Try to convert those children there. So I had a many occasions of seminar with this strategy. Whenever I go to the Philippines, I have meeting with those OFW peoples, see how we can, we can penetrate deep inside of those areas through, through nannies and, and, and nurses. So I have a, a nursing group in the Philippines who has Christian nursing group. Because Philippines are around 85% Roman Catholics. See, we are not talking about them. We're talking about some, some solid mission model Christians are in the Philippines who have this idea. However, forget that. Iglesia de Cristo. It's a bad guy there. <laughs> it, all over the world, you, you can see all these, uh, you know, uh, all so-called Christian group, but inside denying the deity of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, this will happen even amongst the Christians before the coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, now you change your paragraph. However, throughout the Bible and whole church history, reason for God's Servants got killed was simple because these people proclaim that Jesus is God and the second person of Trinity God. Because of that message, 
they all got persecution and killed. Nothing else. But they believed firmly and they cannot give up this belief. If we, if they give up that belief, then they, they would have been saved. But because of that conviction, they got killed. In the same way, our future ministries, your future ministries, should be based on your faith and your belief, and your ministry should be based on the conviction of that faith. Jesus is our God and Savior, only God, okay, only Creator, and so on. That's strong faith. Now, let's look at number one, Saint Paul. Let's look at the Paul's understanding of Christology. Paul's Christology. Now everybody now from now on, open your Bible and underline the Bible. We will go step by step. Paul says in Romans chapter 9 verse 5. Would you open it? Romans chapter 9, verse 5. You underline that part. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Let me read it. Whose other fathers and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh? who is over all, God blessed forever. You see, now it's, Jesus Christ is God. Would you underline that? He is God, okay, and He should receive, and He is what? All universe, okay, is under him. Would you underline that? Don't just uh, listen. Okay, don't just uh, listen. Underline it and then you, you, you meditate it. Don't just uh, take it as intellectual information here. From now, you see, Jesus is above all universe and he is what? God. Okay? In God, in the New Testament, and all the and the Old Testament is Elohim. You see, God. Elohim means what? Creator. This is Paul's theology. Jesus is creator God. Okay? This is a Paul's solid belief. I will give you some more Paul's Christology. Now, it's the famous Philippians 2, chapter 2. Verses 6 through 12. 11, it's better. Okay. What he said? He said, Although you know, open your Bible again. Okay. Although you know this, 
Please open your Bible again and, and consult with your Bible and meditate it and feel it. He said, this is a Paul's theology on Jesus. He said, Paul wrote this to Philippians. He said, although he existed in the form of God, now he means what? Jesus is God. Okay? Jesus is God. Highlight that. Hmm? Next is the Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, 15. Colossians is right after Philippians chapter 1, 15. Here is the, here is the, image of the invisible God. Image means He is God, but He incarnated into human form, showing to us, okay, through our physical eyes we can see that image of God. So it's an actual God incarnated into our form. That's the image of God. He is God Himself. Colossians 1, 15. Let's say Colossians 2, 9. Colossians 2, 9. In Him, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. In Him, all the fullness of deity in human physical form. So He is now physically human, but full God nature. Not a partial God's nature, okay? Full God dwells in him. Are you sensing what I've been saying here? Huh? You see, we have a picture, portrait of Jesus right there. See, he's a human. Human like. You just uh, take it very lightly. You, you've been passing, you know, passing by all the time. Watching that, like that. And, and you, you, you take him very lightly. For that reason, really, I don't want Jesus' picture there. Because we, me, you misuse Jesus. Misconceive. Jesus' image. When you go to the Philippines, you know, Maria, little statues all over, Jesus' pictures all over, even taxis and all over, buses. That's why they, they don't consider Jesus seriously. They think it's a piece of paper. In Africa, it's the same. Roman Catholic countries in South America are the same. He is God. What kind of God is it? He created that picture man, that man created universe and you and me, even ants, even flowers, trees, apple. Coffee, everything he created. So we say, we, we have music say, I 
We are in awe of you. Yesterday I heard you guys just praising Jesus. In awe of you, right? What do you mean by in awe of you? What do you mean by awe? What spelling? A W E. In awe of you, that's really, 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 really powerful and and fearful expression. In awe of you means I am afraid of you. I respect reverend of you. In awe of you. Why? Because that picture man has such a power. If he just twist my neck, it will be like that. I will be gone. If he say even he didn't have to use his hand, say, anger, pass the bone, collapses. <laughs> he will collapse. He said. Sri Lanka. <laughs> he said, "You, two angels come. You make tsunami again there. <laughs> tsunami, and hundred thousand Sri Lankans will die." man now is looking at us but you passing you know by without any paying any respect whatsoever for that reason I don't want the picture hanging there are you guys with me now you know the Peter's confession this is a Paul's. We got more and more, but I just want to give you just a little bit. You know, Peter. Peter's confession was what? Where in the Bible? Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 15 through 17. You know, Peter said this. You are, you are, what is it? Tell me. You are Christ. What do you mean by Christ? You meditate that. You are Christ. Always try to meditate that. Don't just read it like that. Okay? You are Christ. Then you don't understand meaning, then repeat and repeat again. You are Christ. You are Christ. You are Christ. Christ means what? You are anointed being. Then you say, anointed what? Anointed what? In the Old Testament, anointing, anointing in anointing at least the three kinds of people number one king okay king when king got anointed then he is a plain man now he got he, he becomes a king and second king and prophets prophets anointing and high priest okay king prophets and high priest that's anointing. Without, anoint, without being anointed, they cannot be. Now, Jesus, anointed by Father God and Holy Spirit, for, for what? For King of Kings. Okay? Prophets of prophets. And the greatest, the great high priest. Then also called the Messiah, Messiah. So, 
Christ means that Messiah, Christ means anointed one equals Messiah. Then what do you mean by Messiah? What, 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 is, the, what is the meaning? The Messiah. Savior. Savior. Who saves. But it's not just a small S. It's a capital S. That means the, the capital S Savior. The only one Savior. Only one. So when Peter confessed, you are Christ. Okay? That, that term alone, you have to spend few minutes, few hours on that statement alone. You are Christ. You are King of Kings. You are only the Savior. Okay? You meditate Jesus. You are Christ and Son of the living God. Okay? The Son is what? Shuyos. Son is not the subordinate of Father God. Okay? It's the same. Same as living Father God. That's the confession. So Jesus... You are king of kings, you are savior and the messiah, and you are same position as Father God. That's the son of living God. So you, you honor him, reverend him, okay, and fear him. Because of this, Peter got killed. Because of this faith, Paul got killed. We now, because of this, are you ready for die? If you cannot, if you will not, then you are not the servant of God. If someone says, well, we love religious pluralism. And you have to fight for them. You have to fight for Jesus. Against those who teaches. Okay? That's the purpose of Christology class here. I'm, I'm checking you guys. Whether are you willing to die for Jesus or not? When you die for Jesus because of this belief, then Jesus will give you, He will receive glory because of you. Not only that, He will honor you, He will respect you, He will lift you up in the kingdom of God. He will pay for you. He will pay you for what you have done. Jesus promised it. Paul and Peter and all others, they knew that. Okay? Their life were not here. Their lives were not here. Over there. Someday they know they will be go there. They, they will be there. My, I know my life, I, I will not live here for, for eternity. How about you? Actually, although I'm older than you, you may go before me. You may depart this world before me. Chances are, some of you may go to heaven before me. How do I know? I don't know. But I know. When you even go out and walk, chances are you may get hit by a car. When you're in a bus, in subway, you will never know what will happen to your life. 
every day, every day, okay, when you lay down on your bed, before you go to bed, say, thank you, Jesus. Today, I have been survived, saved. Every day. And when you wake up in the morning, you find yourself in breathing, thank you, Jesus. When you call your home, or oh, my mother, my father, my brother and sisters are breathing, thank you, Jesus. Are you doing this? I do that all the time. Then God will give you mercy. Because you acknowledge Him. See, when you, when, you, when you have that kind of attitude, Jesus can read your mind. Oh, this boy, this girl, acknowledging me. That's, in his sight, you are humble man. You are humble lady. I will give you my grace. I will make you live longer than you expect. He will give us all kinds of mercy and grace. Do you agree? Yeah. So every day, every day, Lord, thank you. I am breathing. That kind of person will never give complaint, never, never hate anyone. He will never criticize anyone because no room for that. Because I have, I've been receiving grace from him all the time, every day, okay? So no, no room for judging others. I have to resolve my own issue here in dealing with Jesus. When you look at yourself, then no room for <laughs> judging others. You know what I'm saying? Others are only subject that subject whom waiting for my love, my care, my mercy. So you look at a person, oh he needs my care, my mercy, my concern. Instead of, I want to take some goodies out of him. Okay, try to find any, anything that might good for me. It's always self-centered people. That's not the sign of a good Christian. Always, what can I give? What, how can I make him happy? How can I make this person grow out of me. That's the heart of Jesus Christ. Then, Jesus will give you all kinds of blessings. You don't have to ask. He will give you and your mother and because of you, your parents, your brothers and sisters, because of you, your siblings and your families, get special attention from Jesus. You see? So you will be the source of blessings. And later, when your mom died, your father died, and meet Jesus, he, come here, come here. Because of your daughter in Korea, because of your son in Korea, I love you. Come here. One person 
in a family changes whole family. Yeah. So you should not have any any enemy whatsoever. You should not have any person who whom you are not comfortable with. Always have a good and loving relationship. That makes you happy. All physical illnesses will be gone. Okay? When your spirit keeps solid and sound, okay, clear, and your mental system also clean, clear, and body. That affects your physical body too. So as you, as you get older and older, you look younger and younger, healthier and healthier. And people, your friends around you say, Hey, you look a lot younger than before. Wow, what's the matter with you? Say, Hallelujah. Would you be like that? Eh? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I haven't finished this part here, so make it number one. And in the afternoon, later, we'll try second part.